Hey, welcome to Hurrying Little Cow to the Girl <laughs> Glory of God. Hey guys, so this is part of our elementary education, K through two, how I homeschool the kids. He's gonna be in this today. He is only four, but he is a advanced learner. Not all of my learners are advanced learners at four years old, but he wanted to be in the video. Other brother who's in this same age range um, is six, but he is in the garden um, working, pulling weeds. And so I wasn't gonna pull him away from that. So anyway, we're sitting out here outside. You can always do your schoolwork outside. We just haven't had a chance to be outside today much. And we were in the car all day yesterday. So I wanted to get outside today. That's why we're out here. Not because I'm saying you have to do your schoolwork outside. And we just set up on a table because um, I wanted you to be able to see me and be able to see what I'm showing you at the same time. And I didn't think the angle was gonna work for the ground. But if I was doing this with my child, I would probably just work on the ground because it's easier. We have kids sit up like at a table or desk or whatever you want to say at certain times when we're working on like penmanship practice but most of the time we are sprawled out on the couch laying on the floor um sitting at the dining room table because that's where the, it's easiest with the supplies we're using but we don't have a specific like here's your school desk sit at it so this is not here because he needs this to do school i have a job for you before i start the video so i can talk to them and then i'll have you come back and do some school with me okay can you do a job for me Okay, so I've got a little bucket here. Can you go next to the house? You know where there's the little rocks by the guard, like by the edge of the garage? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Can you get 10 rocks for me and put them in this bucket and bring them back here? Yeah. How many are you getting? Four. How many rocks did I say? 10. 10. Can you get 10 rocks for me and bring them back? Okay. So I'm going to use the rocks for an example here in a minute. This isn't just to get him to go away. <laughs> I forgot before I started the video that I was going to have him do that. So anyway, Malachi, he's going a different direction. You can go over next to the garage. Thank you. We have rocks in the front of the house and at the garage. I just want him at the garage because he's closer to everybody. So anyway, um, we have, if you haven't watched this video before, I am mom, Sarah, my, I'm married to my husband, Mark. We have 10 children at home. We only have eight currently. Um, they range in age, the ones at home range in age from 17 down to six weeks, almost six weeks. He's nursing right now, so you don't see him. Um, and we have been homeschooling for 20, about 20 years. Our oldest um, is uh, from my husband's previous marriage. He is 28 years old. Um, I don't talk about him a whole lot in the videos. Um, just we respect our kids' privacy, which what kids want to be named and all of that stuff. But our son was the reason we started homeschooling. He was having troubles with hearing at the end of first grade. So it was very hard to learn to read when you can't hear. So he's the reason we started homeschooling. We chose to keep him home. We chose to keep him home to um, get him caught up and we enjoyed homeschooling so much that he never went back. So um, I've been homeschooling for 20 years. So I've done this grade level. Done. Thank you. I've done this grade level is now my eighth child to do that. I was very interested in education when I um, was in high school and I worked in a special needs classroom and also just in a regular classroom. Um, the special needs classroom I worked in was like severe special needs. I don't know how to word it properly maybe, but we had um, kids in our classroom who needed um, adaptive equipment to be able to, you know, even do handwriting and that type of stuff. Um, I know sometimes people think special needs, um, in our school at least, we had a special needs classroom that was the kids I worked with and then there was a special needs classroom of kids that were not behaving properly in class. Some of those were because of actual legitimate problems and some of those were just kids that were unruly. So um, anyway, we started homeschooling a while ago. I've always had an interest in education and we start school at six years old officially as that is what our state requirements are. So I do not actually need to be doing school with Malachi at this moment, but he enjoys doing school. So I just do play-based learning until children get to six and then depending on the child will depend on if we continue doing more play-based learning or we continue doing more book work um even though we have very limited book work but um 
for K through two, we do a lot of play games, um, just learning about the world around us. So like in reading, we are learning that letters make sounds, that the sounds go together to make words, and that words make sentences on a page where we can be able to read a story. That's what we focus on through K through two, is learning how to read those stories. I don't, for K through two, we do not focus on where's the verb, where's the noun, any of that. We focus on learning to read, right? Yep. And for math, um, if my child eventually gets to, so again, K through two, I'm not talking about high schoolers here, so you can leave in the comments all the things you want about how my kids aren't gonna be prepared for their real world, but my older kids are prepared for the real world, and I'm just talking about K through two. Our focus in K through two is learning about numbers and learning how numbers work in the world around us. I don't expect them to have their times tables memorized or anything like that. I expect them to understand why we would need to use math in the real world and learning basic number concepts. Okay? So A says uh and A says ah. That's right. It has two sounds, right? Yeah. But today we're going to talk about numbers, not letters, okay? We did yeah. a video about letters already, okay? So did you get me 10 rocks? Yeah. Can you count them out? This is one of the first things we do. Not up to 10. Count to three. Count to five. Go ahead. One, one. two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six. Keep going. And now seven. Uh-huh. Eight, nine, ten. That's one of the first skills. But uh oh. Liz got into it. It's okay. How many are on the table right now? Can I count them to make sure we got ten? Because we need ten for our game, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, this was number 10. You got 10 over there. Good job. Okay, so just working with them on counting. One of the first concepts. And I miscount sometimes. So when something like that happens, oh, let's try again. Not a big deal, right? At this age, learning should be really fun and you should be very much working on praising their efforts, not making them feel beautiful feel small or belittled because of making a mistake because mistakes happen and it is very easy as an adult to be like what were you thinking or you can just say mistakes happen let's try it again so we have 10 here yep okay so learning one-to-one -one correlation so i'm going to draw something on the page okay all i'm doing is making circles i had a bug fly in my face can you put one rock on every circle? One. Yep. This of two, putting one rock on every circle, your child doesn't three, even need to be able to count the number of rocks four, as long as they know that we put one on one. Five, this same concept can be taught. Six, I'm trying to teach out here. Seven. Yay. But the same concept can be taught of can we put one fork at each person's place at the table, right? Or, listen, could we put one um, hymn book in everyone's chair for family worship time, right? Yeah. Or can you go find one shoe for each of your feet? That type of thing. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So this is the things I'm going to teach you first. The first concepts kids need to know. They don't actually need to know how to write any of these numbers. It's like what I was telling in the alphabet when I was talking about learning to read. They don't need to know A, B, C, D. They don't need to know the alphabet in order. They don't need to know um, necessarily even how to write the letters, but recognizing the letters, but knowing that this says this sound. In math, you gonna make some more for the rest of your rocks? Yeah. In math, it's knowing 
hearing the numbers often enough that they can recite the numbers and knowing that one thing goes with each number. But they don't have to actually know that this is a number two when they first start out. Good job. Some of the other concepts that are math that we might not think about because we think about numbers and math, but shapes, um, so he just drew circles for those. Um, so if you wrote a circle and a square and a triangle on the page and you had them identifying those, that's part of math. Thank you. Um, dividing things. So we have, um, we have a cookie, can you split it in half? Those are, those are also math concepts. Did you, make, you want to show them? Okay, very good. Okay, so another game we play, once the child starts to understand the concept of being able to count one to one, like one to one correspondence. Can I have the, this for a second? We're gonna move it. Okay, so another game we play, I have these 10 rocks, but we're gonna start with only five of them. Do I have five rocks? Do I have five rocks in my pile now? Yeah. Sometimes another way to work with your kids is to ask them um, to check your work. So, hey, do I have five rocks in my pile right now? No. No? How many do I need to take away? We have a lot of bugs where we're sitting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many do I take away? Two. Two. Okay. So another game we play, we're gonna start with the five because you want to teach concepts um, in steps. So we work with going up to five first and then we'll go up to 10 once he's very good at doing this. So, you ready? Yeah. One thing we'll do is we have our pile and I will say, I have three, nope, we're gonna leave those there for right now. I have three apples. How many apples do you have? Or whatever you wanna say. Two. Two. Okay, I have one rock. How many do you have? Four. Four. Very good. Okay, now we're going to put... And I'm four. You are four. Can I have your things for a minute? Oh, money concepts is another um, thing you can work with at this age. And one of those things is just using as counters. Um, we, we're not, we're going to use those in a minute. One of those things is using as counters, pennies or dimes or nickels. So when you play this game, you're like, I have two dimes. How many dimes do you have? Hold on, we're gonna put all of them in the pile. I'm still only gonna work up to five, but we now have a pile with 10 in it. I have two rocks. How many do you need to get to get five all together? So we start one, two. How many do we need to get five in this pile? Can you put them in my pile? Three. You need three more. So we can count three, four, five. Good job. Okay, another game we play is once they understand the idea of takeaway, right? Yeah. I have five rocks. Can you take away one rock? How many rocks are left? Four. Good. Okay, I've got five rocks. Can you take away three? How many rocks are left? Two. Two. Another way you can play this game. You ready? So how many rocks do we have? Five. Five. Okay, you turn away. I'm going to hide some. And you got to tell me how many I'm hiding. So I have all five rocks. I'm going to cover some. Okay, look. We had five rocks. How many am I covering? Five. No. No, we have five rocks in this right over here. How many am I covering? He's confused because we had the 10 rocks out before. We usually would only talk about Four. five. Hold on. I'm going to put these ones away, okay? Okay, turn away again. I'm, we're going to have five rocks, okay? Turn away again. Okay. How, now you can look. Okay, there were five rocks, right? Yeah. How many do you see? No, not those ones over there. Just these ones over Two. here. Two. So how many rocks am I covering? Two. You want to check that? Yeah. <laughs> was that covering two? It came to three. It was three. One, two, three. 
and these two make four or five, right? Let's try it again, okay? So how many rocks do I have? Five. Five, okay. Turn away, I'm gonna cover some. Okay, now you look. How many rocks can you see? Four. So how many am I covering? One. Good, let's try it again, okay? You see all the rocks? Yeah. I'm gonna cover some rocks. Okay. No. Uh, I'm gonna cover, no, you'll get to it in a minute. I'm gonna cover some rocks, okay? Turn away. Okay, look. How many rocks can you see? Two. How many am I covering? Good job. These are all math concepts we've done before. I'm not trying him on camera with something we haven't done. Okay, so there's five rocks. I'm gonna look away. Can you cover some? Tell me when I'm ready to look. You can look. Okay. I don't see any rocks. So I think you're covering five. <laughs> yep. Okay, let me see. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five. Yay! Then you would do the same game with up to 10, right? Okay. I wasn't. Another way you can make this real world math, once your kids get a little older and understand the concepts of numbers, you can still do it with counters, but we could do, okay, if, okay, mommy and daddy, mommy and daddy are gonna sit down at the table, okay? And what if grandma comes and joins us? So put a rock for grandma. Nope, over here at our table. Okay, what, how many rocks do we have now? Like how many people are at the table? Three. Three, and what if Samuel and Naomi came to sit down at the table? How many rocks do you need to move? Two. Okay. And if I got- oh, Wait, hold on, how many people table? are at the table now? Five. Five, okay, and you wanna to come to the table? So yeah. bring your rock to the table. Okay, how many people are sitting at the table now? Six. Six. Uh-oh, Naomi has to go wash her hair. How many people are at the table now? Five. Good job. Okay, so that's another way you can use that. Um, so, like, we're setting the table for dinner. Oh, what if Grandma and Grandpa came to visit? How many cups do we need? That type of thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so another way to play with numbers is dice. Not using them for gambling. <laughs> but rolling dice, counting the dots on the dice. So you could just take two dice, roll them. Can you count how many dots are on my dice? Six. There's six on this one. How many on that one? Six. So how many all together? You can count them. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So six plus six equals 12, right? Okay, so another way we use dice, once they know the one for one correlation is we take these same circles. Can I have your pen for a second? And I'll write numbers on them. Can you put the right number on here? You can turn the dice over. Oops, I just realized I gave him six numbers, but I only brought five dice outside. You can buy dice. We bought a hundred pack of dice for like $10 or something, and we can use it for um, lots of different learning games. You can turn them over if you need to, if they're not the right number. Well. So you can use dice um, later on. I'll explain as I tell elementary school, uh, like older elementary school kids, I'll show you how you can use dice in different ways for math games. But this is how we use dice for the little ones, either rolling the dice and counting the numbers on it or learning how to, yeah, match up. Good job. Great job. But okay. We're missing. I one. know. I only brought five dice. I'm kind of silly, huh? At this age, if kids still can't write numbers, it's okay. Um, you want them to be able to see numbers. Like, Malachi, can you tell me what number this is? Six. What number is this? Two. What? I mean, sorry. What number is this? Four. One. So not necessarily at four years old, but I'm saying the kindergarten Two, through five. second grade. By the time they're done with second grade, um, probably before that, but at least by One, the time they're done two, with second three, grade, four, you want them to be able to see a number four, five, in six, from seven, eight, nine. From one to ten, probably would be kindergarten-ish. And then from 
one to 20 would be like first grade-ish and one to 100 for second grade-ish, being able to see a number and read it. So he's a little young, he doesn't know, like if I were to write down 87, he'd probably have trouble with that. So then the other way that we teach math is with cards, right? Yeah. Okay, so we like to play, you can, I don't know if you can see, they're doing work behind me over there. Um, we like to play games with cards. So one <laughs> of the things I would do is take the queens, jacks, aces, sorry, queens, kings, and jacks out of the pile. And I would just have him match up the cards. So maybe I take the cards and put them ace, one, you know, ace, two, three, four, one card down. And then I'll give him a card and say, can you match this? And just want him to put this on the eight that I already have out. I don't want to put the cards out because it's getting windy and they might blow away. Can I have it for a second? Yeah. Another game to play with cards is war. So if you've never played war before, you want to show them? I want to show them how to uh, play bad good. Bad good? Yeah. What's that one? Well, one where you put the bad cards and like the queen into the bad guy. Oh, uh, are the jacks, queens, and kings bad guys? No. Well, kings are the good ones. Oh, kings are good guys? Yeah. So just the jacks and queens are bad guys? Yeah. Kids will make up their own games, too. Because <laughs> I've never heard of this game, and I don't know who decided to make it up. Can I tell them more while you play? Is that okay? Okay, he's playing good and bad. Um, so playing war, you give each person, like you divvy out the cards for however many people are playing. Um, people probably know this game, but I know some people don't. So divvy out um, around the table, dealing out a card to each person, go through the entire deck that way. And you keep the cards face down in, in your hand so you can't see them. And everybody at the same time flips over their top card. Whoever has the highest card gets to keep the whole pile. So in that game, it goes, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, and ace is the highest. Why the game is called war is if two people play the same number card, so let's say you both play threes, it's called a war, and you put, th you have your number three, and then you take and put down a number of cards. We always put down three cards. It doesn't matter that I said three was the number up. So you'd have your whatever face card was the matching and you put three cards face down and your fourth card you flip over so everyone can see it. And out of those two people that just did that, whoever had the highest next card gets to take all of the cards. That's called War. That is one of Josiah's favorite games, right? Did you win yet? Nope. No, I did. Now you won? Okay. So he just played good bad all by himself. Can I show them how to play a game? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, we play a game called garbage. You wanna play garbage with me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so garbage is another game that helps teach number concepts. Okay. So you shuffle all the cards together. This is a fine game to play if you're missing a card or two from your deck, because um, especially if you're only playing with two people, you have a lot of extra cards. So you take your cards, shuffle them up. You gotta go to the other side of the table. Okay, everyone gets 10. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready? So you just put your cards out so that there's five and five. Five in your top pile, five in your bottom pile. We usually play on a bigger table than this, and the card, this table is very slippery, so the cards are very slippery. These are yours too. I'll put my glasses back on. So he's played this game before. He knows how to play this one. This is a game we play a lot. Um, and so right now, trying to get younger kids involved, my two-year-old really likes this game, but he does it with help. Yep, put the first, so you start with one card down and the rest of the cards in this pile. You want a six? Yep. Okay, take the six. So Our I cards might blow away. And so you count one, two, three, four, five, six, and it goes in the six pile. Queens and jacks are garbage. You don't want those. So I pick up a card, 
a three, so I put it in my one, two, three pile. Whoops, drop the card. And then I get to flip this one over. Oh, it's a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a jack. Jack's garbage. Go ahead. What number is it? Eight. He doesn't have to count through his numbers. I'm doing it for your benefit, but he knows where those numbers are because he's played this game so often. Go ahead. What's that? Oh, he already had a six, so he put that down. That was garbage to him. Um, I don't have a six, so I'm going to take it. And sometimes what? And sometimes I take another six and switch my yeah. six. Sometimes if he picks up a six, he wants to switch it, so he has the right six. Here you go. Not that there's a right six. He just wants to do the right one. What you got? Ooh. Aces are ones. And a king is wild. You can put a king in any space you want. And, oh, I got a king, so I'm going to put it in a space. I also can move this if I get an eight later. So I picked up a five. I'm going to put it in my five place. A seven. Oh, I already have a seven. Garbage. He needs a seven. He doesn't have one. Can't move. My leg's asleep and the baby's on it. <laughs> he woke up from nap inside, came out to nurse, and then wanted to go back to sleep. Right, baby? Oh, my turn. Oh, I got a king. I can put that in any spot. It's a wild. I got a four. Put it in my four spot. Sorry, this is a little messy out here. It's also windy. Jack, garbage. Oh, he already had a seven, and I don't need a seven, so I'll pick up the next card. An eight, so I can take my king out. I can use my king somewhere else. Oh, I can put my two back in its spot and use my king somewhere else. Oh, I can take my one, use my king somewhere else. And when I finish, he gets one more turn because he might still catch up and we both win on the same hand. Aw, mommy won. Good game. I want you to win. You wanted me to win? Can you put all the cards the right way for me? I'm going to finish this video, okay? And then you can do another video with me. Okay, so that is how we play um, garbage. There's a lot of games you can play using cards because they have numbers on them and they're all written out. Um, just giving your child ace through 10 and having them line them up in order is a great game to play. Um, if they get past that skill, writing on paper and being able to like make number cards. So do like one through 20 or one through 30 and have them put those in order. All kinds of different games you can play. A lot of the games that I mentioned with the reading where you can make like an obstacle course and go have them find the right thing, do that with numbers also. So again, different math concepts are shapes, numbers, counting, um, money, fractions. Um, there's a lot of different things that are math concepts that are, you don't really know where to fit them. So with money at this age, we will regularly get out our coin jar. I didn't bring it out because I didn't want to bring it outside but we'll regularly get out our corn clean jar and I'll put a quarter in one spot, a dime in another spot, just like on the table. And I'll ask him to arrange a like, um, pile of money into pennies, dimes, nickels. Um, also, we learn the concept of counting um, just by him doing it after me. Um, so I would say, okay, let's count by tens. You ready? 10, 20, 10, oh, you wanna do it? 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 60. 100. 100. How I would do that, I don't think we've counted by threes before, so I'm going to show you right now. Can, can you say this? Oh. Time it goes one, two, three, four, five, ten. Uh, you can count by lots of different One, things, right? 30, 40, 50, <laughs> 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Yes, you can count by lots of different things because you can count by ones, you can count by twos, you can count by fives. But let's try threes and I'll show them how we do it. So I'll say a number and then you say it after me, okay? Three. Three. Six. Six. Nine. Nine. Twelve. Twelve. Fifteen. 15, 18, 18, 21, 
plate one. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Thirty. Thirty. And another way you can do that is by writing that down. Three, six, nine and having them point at it while you say it, being able to say those numbers. So anyway, if you have more questions about that, please write it in the comments, or we will be doing a question and answer video about these um, K through two videos I'm making here in about a week or so. So let me know if you got any questions or join us for a live question and answer video. I will let you know when we prepare that, but I'm gonna to try to finish the rest of my videos today on this topic.